Yo, what's up? I'm Dulex. I'm gonna show you this van I built. This van has a full kitchen with running water, a hidden entertainment area, a transforming bedroom, a full bathroom with a custom toilet, controllable heat, stealth security cameras, and much more. Let's check it out. This is a 2004 Sprinter with 229,000 miles on it. Driver's seat in here is pretty basic. I didn't really change much up here, but I did add a couple things to make it a little bit more comfortable while driving. I put a screen up here that I can use to switch from left and right side of the vehicle so I can see when I'm changing lanes if there's any cars next to me. And these cameras are actually tied into the security cameras in the back. This passenger seat right here, I decided to put on a swivel. There's a lever underneath the seat that when you pull it, it will release the swivel and it'll let you start turning it around. It locks in at 45 degrees and then it also locks in at a full 90. And then you can kind of get your seat into whatever position that you want to from here with the settings that are already on the stock seat. I built a desk that fits right over where you're sitting here. And I put that into this end of the kitchen. If you press down on these two levers, then this desk comes out and then you pull this part open and it gives you a space to work here. The idea behind this is that you have your keyboard and paper or whatever else you have down here and you've got your screen on the top part of this and when this is down this top piece serves as extra counter space or a space to eat but you don't always want this area open you want some privacy so i actually built in a 100 percent blackout curtain right here i put snaps on the ceiling and at night you can just go completely stealth mode, have all the lights on in here and no one will ever know. From the front, it kind of just looks like a construction vehicle wall, but it is actually fabric. Right above the sliding door is where I decided to put most of the electronics so you can control your stuff right when you come in. Well, the first switch right here is the lights, actually on a dimmer. So if I twist this knob right here, it controls the lighting in here. This is a single strip of LED lighting that goes throughout from the front of the van all the way to the back. And I made the design in the ceiling out of walnut. The second switch right here is for the secondary lighting. So if I hit it, you can see I've got lighting underneath this cabinet and underneath the cabinet in the back. To the right side of those switches is the monitor for the security cameras. Now, when you turn this on, this allows me to be able to see all sides of the van at the same time. Let's say you're in here and you're stealth camping or something and you hear some weird noises outside of your van, you wanna know what's out there, but you can never see what's out there without giving it away that there's somebody inside the van. So this is my solution for that. They actually just look like side view cameras or backup cameras. But if you look at it, that's actually what they are and I'm using them for that too. So I'm standing out here so you can see me on the side view camera, but when I'm not in the back using that, this screen in the front seat is also showing the same thing that that screen in the back is so that I can actually see what's going on while I'm driving and switching lanes and I'm just splitting the signal. So that way it's a multi-purpose camera. So it looks like a backup camera and that's because it is a backup camera, but it's being repurposed so that I can see the outside of the van while I'm on the inside. So I already showed you this top locking drawer that's for the desk, but the next drawer underneath, this is a push to open drawer. And under there, this is a utensil drawer. And underneath there, this is a cabinet for the refrigerator. So if you pull that out, I have the refrigerator here on wheels. It's just hooked up to some electricity in the back of this cabinet, but I can just pull it out like this wheel it around and I put it on wheels so that I could actually bring it outside the van if I wanted to or use it as an extra seat. I can just slide it back in here when I'm not using it and then we close this door 
right here. Right above that, we've got a propane stove. I like this particular model because it has a glass top, so it just looks fancy, but also that gives you space to use this as extra counter space when you don't actually have anything cooking on here. And then the desk from earlier, if I unlock it, it slides out and when it does slide out, you have extra counter space right here. And this goes basically all the way to the door right there. So this just extends it even further. This pulls up, folds back there, and then folds up this way. This is now a backsplash, so you don't have to worry about this getting on your walls or up in your front seat if you have the curtain down. Now, because I put the stove right here, ventilation is always gonna be an issue with something like this. So I decided to put this roof vent right above that just hit the button and then when you do it automatically opens all on its own and starts i even use it to actually keep everything cool in here but we'll talk about that a little bit later right in front of the stove i decided to put a designated spot for a trash can right here because that's one of those things that you always forget about when you're making these just where are you going to put your trash while you're over here cooking and you need to throw something away. I didn't want this just to be a trash can area, so I also made this a coat rack. You can put your keys and stuff like that over here. And I even made it a spot where you can put your shoes. So your shoes can actually go right here like this. But not only that, I put another row behind that of where your shoes go over this divider. So you can actually have four pairs of shoes right here, right at the entrance, and you don't have to get everything dirty on the inside of the van. The floor is insulated with an inch and a half of foam insulation. I covered that with a plywood subfloor. The walls and the ceiling are insulated with an inch and a half of batting insulation. I was in here building in the winter and I felt the difference immediately as soon as I put the insulation in. On this side of the L-shaped counter, this is where I put the sink. Now in the last van I built, I made a huge sink in here, but I wanted to make a sink with a smaller footprint. This is a cutting board that also helps to make sure that you can use the counter when you're not using the sink. You can also hide your dishes under there, but if you pick this up, there's actually a drying rack right under that. So if you just wash the dishes, if you wanna put them down on here, then they can drip down into the sink. This rolls up and out of the way. And then underneath that, there is another rack under there to hold your dirty dishes. Inside the drain, it's got a drain plug and something to uh, just catch all the extra food so you don't get anything going down there that you don't want going down there. The third switch on that control panel I showed you earlier is actually for the water pump. So I have it turned on right now so the water works and it runs. This hose comes out so you can move this around over here. And it also has this switch on the bottom so you can change the mode that it comes out with. There's these three cabinets that on the bottom right here, I put a bungee cord shelf so that you could put stuff that you don't mind having out there, but the stuff that you want inside of a cabinet, I put these here, these locks that you push them in and it allows you to open up the cabinet but when they're closed not only they're out of the way but it it keeps the cabinet locked so you can't open it up and then i put these vertical hinges on here that i think are traditionally used for those things that go underneath your sinks but i repurposed those and use those up here as a cheap way to open these up without using struts or something like that plenty of space to store a whole bunch of food and then underneath the sink this is where I put some more storage, but more like utility stuff goes down here. All these drawers are pushed to open and they're locking. If you just push this, then that drawer opens up. Inside of here, this is where the propane tank sits. This is actually in a sealed cabinet. So if I open this up, these are com compression latches and you can actually see that there's a rubber gasket here so that if you have a propane leak or something like that, it doesn't escape into your space because you can suffocate from that. You're usually not worried about explosions with these. You're usually worried about suffocation in a small space like this. So there's actually a hole in the floor right underneath this. So if the, there is a leak, it just goes outside right beneath there because propane is heavier than air. Underneath here, I put two six gallon water tanks up here and they're just controlled with this lid. So when this one fills up, you just untwist this lid and put it onto the other one. I put this minimal hardware in here and this actually also locks everything closed. But when you pull up on it, there's a little latch hook on the other side. So when you move that, 
you can open it, put magnets on there or those RV um, latches that grab, you have to like yank the door open and stuff. I'd rather just do something like this. It's a natural motion as you're opening up the door and it's also minimal. I try to avoid having hardware like sticking out while you're in here because this is a small space. You don't want to like, catch your clothes on it or something. When you push this one open, this is the pantry area and it locks in closed just like the rest of the drawers. This cabinet right here, this is the closet. This is some more utility stuff under here, but when you open this up, the water heater is right here. And then underneath that, we've also got a diesel heater. So that's how I can control the heat in here. There's actually a vent for the diesel heater underneath the kitchen where the toe kick usually is in a traditional kitchen inside of a house. You can actually change the direction of this by just rotating it so you can have it blow into the back or into the front, whatever you want that rhymed. I actually had that running the entire time when I was building this van because I built it over the winter months and it works pretty great. I was able to keep it about 70 degrees in here. Inside this hole right here, there's a hose and there's a quick connector on the other end. So inside the cabinet, if you pull this box open, you can see that there is a space for you to put the quick connector in. You can run this with the hot and cold water control just like on a regular sink and this is actually a dual purpose item so because this is so long and expandable i can come out the back door over here and spray water out that back door i can also go out the side door or even out the front doors if i wanted to because this is so long you might be thinking that's a weird spot to be but i put it in the middle of the van because right across from it is the shower this right here is actually a sliding timbre door. And I made this out of the scraps from the walnut that I used on the cabinets and the ceiling. I actually made the handle out of a piece of the walnut. You can actually see the tree bark on there still. All you have to do is grab the handle and this slides open along a track that I put on the bottom. So this is just a complete solid wood door. The door actually slides a lot smoother than I expected it to. On the opposite side of this door, I used fabric to keep these pieces of wood together, but also allow them to be flexible and move. But the fabric I used was um, marine waterproof fabric. So that way, when you're in here and you're taking a shower, it can roll off of this fabric. Inside of here, I covered all of the walls with vinyl, but before that I put up plywood and coated those in several coats of Red Guard and then sealed all the corners then put the vinyl up and then sealed all the cracks. This toilet right here is actually a composting toilet. And I made it myself because the composting toilets that you can buy are extremely expensive. Well, most of them are over a thousand dollars. And if I lift this part up, then you can actually see that there's basically just a basket under there to receive the solids. And there's a container under there to receive the liquids. And you can just easily dump this and then switch it out when it fills up. I wanted to make sure I had enough knee room. It's like just wide enough for my shoulders to fit. And then I also put in here a waterproof toilet paper dispenser. Over here, this is the additional closet space. This one is a lot more shallow. So I decided to make the other closet over here so that you can actually have hanging clothes over there. Right underneath that, I put an open shelf with more of these bungee cords to hold everything in that shelf. And then underneath here, this is where the battery is. And this battery is running everything that I have in here. And it's being charged with the solar panels that I have up on the roof. And then this screen right here is a touch screen and it lets me kind of control everything in here. And I can also hook this up to my phone so that I can monitor everything from my phone without opening up this cabinet. So when I open this up, this is how I control everything and turn it on and off. Even though I can do it from the power station as well, I like to have a physical switch for everything. And down here, this is my fuse panel and my breaker box. So for all of the 120 outlets, like the regular outlets that you have in your house, I have um, breakers for those over here on this side. These are the fuses for all of the DC appliances in the van. And I actually created a short circuit in here so I could show you that if ever one of your fuses goes out, 
this actually lights up red so that you can easily look and see which fuse needs to be replaced. Once you're done messing around with anything in here, turning on and off breakers or replacing fuses, you can just close this up and it also pushes to close and you can see the light kick on if any of your uh, fuses went out even without that even being open. Above that electrical cabinet, up here we've got more cabinets identical to the ones up in the kitchen but these are intended to hold um, clothing or just anything else that you might want to use in your bedroom or living room area. Right underneath that, we have a window. I think this small window is a pretty good balance to have. You can just open it up like this. It locks into place in a few different places. And there's a screen right here that's removable so that you don't have to get bugs in here. Then you can get a nice breeze coming through here and cool off this whole area if you have the fan sucking air from the front. Up above the window, I put this pull down shade right here. And when this is down and you're on the outside, you cannot see on the inside at all. And in fact, even without the shade, because this window is tinted, when you're on the outside, you can barely see on the inside. Underneath that, we have an extra counter. The reason why I did that is because I wanted to have an entertainment area because when sitting on the couch, this is actually the perfect distance away to have a TV right there and just relax. There's actually a button right here that I have. And if I press this button, you can see I have a hidden TV that was inside of the counter. And I put the hidden TV there for a couple of reasons. Number one, I've put TVs on mounts before. And when you're driving around, they're always smacking the wall. And then number two, this is just cool. It just comes out of the counter. And then you don't actually lose your window because you can just pull this down out of the way. So that was the only way I could possibly have the TV and the window. And I know I don't need a TV, but this is a luxury van, so it's luxurious to have a TV. I also put another 120 outlet on top for just anything you might want to plug in and use while you're back here in the living area just hanging out. And right next to that, you can actually see that I put more storage on the back door. It's space that can be utilized that's usually not. So I decided to build this portion into the back door. I decided to put a skylight right here instead of another roof vent. There's actually a light that's on here. If you pull this lever down and push it up, that's how you open this skylight. And it locks in right here on this piece so that it can be cracked or you can just straight up open it all the way. Let's say you want to have this open but you don't want bugs in here. If you pull down on this part of it that's actually a bug screen and let's say it's during the day and you just want to take a nap you actually can pull this the other way and now you have it locked in with a blackout shade so now you can have fresh air or you can have the top closed and have this open any way that you want to do it. If you don't want light in you don't need it and then if you do want it you can have it without the bugs. Underneath the couch, I can actually pull up on this and open that up. And then there's just this whole front area is just deep storage. If you take this whole cushion out, then you'll then those actually lift up and that allows you to get access to the wheel well under here. And on this side, this is actually the 16 gallon water tank. So I know this couch is pretty big decently comfortable and everything, but this is actually not where you sleep. So you just pull these cushions off and throw them on top of the counter. And I really wanted to make sure I had a space to actually put the cushions because usually that's something else you forget when you're designing something like this. And there's just this lock over here. So you pull that lock open, move out of the way, and you let this wall come down. And when it does, you can see that there is a mattress you don't have to move the cushions on the bottom there because they actually uh, the bed rests on top of it I designed it that way so that I wouldn't have to change anything up there's another bungee storage cabinet on the top and on the side right there when you want to put the bed away it's also very easy you just lift it right up same way that we let it down and you lock this in and just like that, the bed is away and you're back in couch mode. This is by far the fastest transforming bed that I've ever done. And when the bed transforms, it transforms the whole space from a bedroom to a living room. 
And the cool thing about this is that you can have the TV up the entire time. So you can have the TV up while you're sleeping or while you're laying down in bed or while you're sitting on the couch. In the back, when you open this up, these doors actually rotate all the way around and there's a magnet on the back. Inside of here, this is actually where you get um, access to the door swinging back in your face. Diesel fuel tank that I talked about earlier, as well as the water fill. From that tank, there's a water pump that pulls the water up to the front of the van and that goes through the water heater and everything for that shower faucet and for the sink faucet. And this is also where you hook up your um, battery if you need to plug it into a house to charge it up if you're not getting enough charge from the sun or from the engine when it's running. So most of the products that I used in this van, I got on Amazon. I have a list of all of the products that I used for this van or that I have used for other vans or builds that you've seen me do. So if you're interested in that, you can check in the description and I have a link so that you can access all of those links and find some of the stuff that I used in this van if you want it to use it for one of your projects. Now, I've been using this van for a couple of months now and I really like it, but this van is kind of huge. This is the longest, biggest van that they made in 2004. And I want something a little bit smaller. So I'm actually going to list this van for sale. So if you're interested in buying this van, then you can send me an email to the email address that's either on the screen or in the description. If this van has been sold by the time you're watching this video, then in the description, it will say that this van has been sold already. I'm gonna probably try to let this van go for relatively cheap because I didn't spend that much to make it. It's a really old van and I just want somebody to be able to enjoy it and experience it while it's still alive. Send me an email if you're interested, if not, it's cool. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Later.